Albert Codus. In this lesson, we'll talk about how we can understand how good our artificial intelligence algorithm is. But let's start by defining what machine learning is all about. In classical programming, we give the computer a series of conditions and accordingly determine how it should respond to them. In machine learning, we are essentially trying to teach a computer to draw conclusions based on some input data. For example, we can show it 10 pictures of a bus. Then we show it 10 arbitrary pictures of cars, trains, buses and planes and ask the algorithm to point out which ones picture the bus. We can do this for a bunch of times and hopefully a ratio of correct and incorrect answers will favor the former. But if we just show it the same set of pictures over and over again, then in the end it will simply remember the correct answers. In this case, we witness something that is called overfitting. It leads to a 100% guessing accuracy for the data it was trained on, but when the model meets previously unseen data, it fails to generalize its knowledge onto new examples, and therefore it fails altogether. Therefore, it makes sense not to train our model on the entire data set at once, but to keep some parts of this data for later tests. In fact, we want to split our data set into three parts. The first one is called the training data set. This is the data on which we will train our model. In the boss example, it can be a set of pictures that we show to our AI and we say something like, hey, this is a bus and this is not a bus. You understood? The second one is called the validation data set. This is a data set that our model did not see and therefore it cannot know in advance which answers are correct and which are not. In fact, we'll try several different models or their hyperparameter values and using such a validation set, we will determine which type of model or their hyperparameter values does the best job of identifying the bus. Finally, there is a test data set. This data set is necessary for an unbiased assessment of how the model will behave in a sort of real environment. In fact, this set is similar to the validation set. The model is also not familiar with the data in the test set, and the only difference between them is that we'll use the validation set to find the most efficient model and a set of its hyperparameters and then check on a test data set to make sure our chosen model still performs well. So the question is, how do you divide the data set? What are the proportions for training, validation and test sets? And the answer is, it depends on the task, as well as on the quality and the availability of data. But to start with, I think it will be a good idea to stick to the default meta. 60% for the training set and 20% for the validation and test sets. And the whole process may look something like this. First, we analyze our features, process, clean and optimize our data set. Next, we train the model on the training data, evaluate the result and, depending on the evaluation, decide whether we should do some more data preparations and training or move to the validation stage. After that, we should also need to decide, based on the evaluation of the results, whether we should take the best performing model and proceed to run it on the test set, or should we return to the training stage. And if the model performs well on the training set, then the model is pretty much ready. Otherwise, if the results on the test set are strikingly different from the results on the validation set, then we should roll back and investigate. All right, so now let's perform the split into training, test and validation sets in practice. The only thing is the Titanic, which we downloaded from Kaggle, is already split into uh, training and test sets. But for the educational purposes, we'll pretend that train CSV is the only data set we've got and we'll perform our split on this. Dataset. We are already familiar with this code from the previous lessons. So in that cell where we import the required libraries, we'll add another one called scikit-learn or sklearn for short. And in particular, we'll import the train test split from the model selection class. 
And in the next cell, we read the data set in CSV format, and we store it as a data frame in the Titanic. Once again, for this lesson, we are pretending that this is the only set of data we have. And the last cell will just display the first five records of our data set. All right, and before we're going to split our data, we need to begin with splitting it into features and labels. And it is pretty straightforward. For features, what we need to do, we need to just drop the column survived, as this is our target variable. And our labels will consist of just the values from the survived column. So essentially, labels is what we're trying to predict whether a passenger survived or not. So we're going to declare two variables, features and labels. And for the features, we'll utilize the drop method on Titanic, and we pass survived as an argument, and axis equals one as a column. And then for labels, this is just the column survived. And we'll need these features and labels as parameters to our train test split method. So we need to pass features, then labels, and then we need to specify the test size. Test size represents the proportion of the data set to be included in the test split. In other words, how much data we want to reserve into the test and validation sets. But because train test split method can only split our data set into two, we'll have to perform it twice. Therefore, the first split will reserve 60% for training set and then 40% for validation plus the test set. And this random state parameter controls the shuffling applied to the data. You can read more on that in the official sklearn docs. And of course, we'll need to specify where we want to store the output. And this method has a predefined output order, which we must follow. So first of all, it takes our features and split them into train and test set marked here with X. And then it does the same with labels, splits them into train and test set. And this is the conventional representation of the outputs as it is specified in the official docs. And now because of the train test split limitations I've mentioned earlier, we need to split our test set into the validation and the actual test set. So essentially I'm taking X test and Y test outputs from the first call of this train test split function and these data sets will be passed as input arguments to this train to split function for the second call. That will split them half and half. Therefore, we'll need to change the value of the test size parameter to 0.5. And we'll leave the random state as it is. So the only thing that's left to do is to change the names of the output data sets to x test, x val, y test, and y val. In other words, we use this a train test split function twice to split our data into training, test, and validation sets. And after that, we can check the data allocation by printing the len or length of these corresponding data sets. Labels will represent our full data set. As you remember, the Titanic data set was already split into train and test sets, and we were pretending that train data is the only data we have. So we are splitting the training data, labels represent the whole data set, this training data, and then Y train represents the training data set when we use the train test split for the first time. That should be 60% of our data. And Y val and Y test represent the second train test split 50-50. They represent our validation and test sets. And as you can see, they had odd number of records in them. Therefore, they've been split that way. But other than that, numbers do add up. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section or refer to the official documentation. Let's continue with the concept of data holdout. So what we just did we retained some of the data we're not going to use to train our model. Instead, we'll only use it to test how well the model can generalize. The train test split method coped with the task, but the division occurs only once. 
If we want to split this set again, we need to call the method again or wrap a cleverly written loop around it. However, there are many other methods for holding out the data and one of them is called kfold cross validation. It splits the data into k randomly selected subsets of roughly the same size. One subset is used to test the model and the rest are used to train it. And the trick is that if we divided our data into, say, five subsets, then training and verification will occur five times. After that, we take the average of all five runs. And that brings us to another important topic, evaluation of the effectiveness of our model. We need a metric to understand how well our model performs, and here are some metrics at our disposal. In the case of the Titanic, we are solving this so-called classification problem. That is, we need to determine whether the passenger will survive or not. Zero, the passenger went under, and one, for a good swim with a happy ending. Therefore, for the classification problem, we'll turn to classical metrics, such as accuracy, precision, and recall. Accuracy is the number of correctly predicted outcomes for passengers on board, over the total number of passengers on board. This metric has one interesting caveat. It assigns the same weight to all observations. This can have negative consequences if the distribution in the sample is biased towards a certain class, but don't worry about it just yet. Next one is precision. This is the ratio of true positives over the actual results, or in our case, the number of passengers who were predicted that they would survive the shipwreck, and they actually did, over the total number of positive predictions. These include true and false positives combined. And finally, recall. True positives over predicted results. In our case, it looks like the number of those who are predicted to swim out still warm and those who did so over the total number of those who survived. All right then, in subsequent lessons, we'll talk about optimizing the algorithm and applying everything that we already know. That was V. Please give this video ample thumbs up, toll the bell and subscribe. See you in the next lesson. Cheerio. Thank you.